um, uh, poor concentration, feelings of guilt and self, uh, low self-worth, uh, hopelessness about the future, uh, thoughts of dying and disrupted sleep or sleeping a lot. Um, often these two go, well, sometimes you sleep a lot, sometimes you don't sleep at all. It, it really depends on, on the situation or how low you're feeling. Um, uh, so feeling very low in, in energy and uh, not having much appetite or having a lot of appetite, it, it depends on each person, but these are uh, general symptoms. Uh, so there's a lot of things that can cause depression. Um, and doctors will rely very heavily on physical health. If you go and ask for help, they will say, well, you need to get in shape. Uh, because for some reason, physical health is easier to get treated than mental health. Um, other medication you, you're on can also um, have an impact. Uh, antibacterial and antiviral medication often have that side effect. Um, and obviously if you drink or go, uh, use drugs, uh, that also have an effect. Um, so one study said that games can be good as coping mechanisms. It can improve the mood, distract from stress. Um, and uh, Rebecca talked last time about Ibelin. Yes. Who used, uh, and the guy used um, the game to have a whole different life, basically. Uh, and I think a lot of people with depression also uses it like that. They kind of get a break from reality. And... Uh, can slip into a different world. Uh, this also has negative sides though, because addiction uh, comes quite easily. And um, uh, a lot of the violence in the world are often uh, blamed on violent video games. Mm -hmm. uh, so it is not without fault to use games as coping mechanisms. Yes. It's meant to come. Are you seeing the um, yep. Menti screen on? Uh... Then there's uh, a question already. Yeah. It's just not coming up on. Uh... Oh, so you have problems getting to. I thought, ah, right, now I know what you mean. I thought you were going to be. No, on the second screen, on the first screen, actually, when you it's just not on the second screen. Hi, hey, perfect timing. <laughs> Menti time. <laughs> Um, you're just on time. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, let's see if we can recover this. Hang on. Uh, uh, yeah. Let's put it over. It's, it's a bit medieval this way. Um, you cannot... Uh, yeah, but you can control like that. But uh, Menti doesn't do the mighty. Okay, fair enough. You need to press the arrow button if you want to navigate your Menti. Okay. Next time I bring my little devices. Yeah. 
one. You can't see what I've got, sir. No. No, you can't see that. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. It's a mystery. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I think it's a good point actually. In smaller groups, they were uh, not revealing it first. Yeah, I thought about that, but yeah, yeah, I yeah. Know. <laughs> Usually, you wouldn't know. Maybe. Yeah. Which games do you play to relax, uplift your mood, or distract yourself from stress? So this is an open-ended question. Out of these ones, I think I've only played one of them. <laughs> Out of these ones, I think I've only played one of them, um, which is Sims 4. Um, but these are all good games, uh, as far as I can tell. Because they take you from reality, put you into a fictional world where mm -hmm. you can escape for a moment. What is house flipper? Is it um, where you kind of uh, modernize houses? Kind of all oh, right, okay. <laughs> right. Because I know there's, there's a TV, uh, you know, there was a TV, very American thing, uh, TV series where they had in Egypt, so like you know, two houses and all that kind of stuff. Okay. I mean, you know, so. <laughs> What element do you find most helpful for relaxation or mood improvement?
Yeah. Uh, so going into another world, that's quite common. Um, I saw some studies saying that um, that element is really important and good storytelling. Uh, and I'm going to get back to that um, when we go back to um, the presentation. Um, <clears throat> Uh, so this study was done um, on depression and anxiety, especially, uh, and commercial games. So games that are not necessarily made for for that, but for well, profit, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, so for depression, uh, casual games actually uh, scored the highest. Um, so like Candy Crush, Angry Bird, um, that type of type of game, because I guess you can just kind of disassociate for a moment and just play with candy, I guess. <laughs> um, but they've concluded the study saying that um, commercial video games is a very good thing uh, when dealing with depression and anxiety. Um, but yeah, that's also the only article that I could reference. Uh, question, why, um, that's on me again, but uh, Flappy Bird, why is that not under casual? Is that under casual? Is that competitive? I think it's competitive because, uh, yeah, the moment you, you, um, yeah. Yeah, you, you get a high school and you get a high school list. I see. I see. I see. I see. That's, yeah. that's the determinant. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, so some games for, especially for depression, is Sparks, which is an adventure game. Um, I haven't tried it because originally I thought maybe it was like a interactive one where you can talk to people. And I thought, why would a 30-year-old go on and talk to 14-year-olds? Um, but I'm going to try it because it's not like that. <laughs> um, and Elude, I couldn't couldn't find where to play it, um, but it looks really good. It takes you through the uh, whole thing of depression, like how you're feeling, uh, how the world looks when you're in a very depressive episode. Um, so it's, it's a way to kind of put yourself into perspective and see how, how can I actually get out of this um, rather than just sit alone with your thoughts, um, which takes you into these dark places. Uh, a lot of uh, health um, professionals that I saw talk about um, coping mechanisms said, oh, you should you should really gather your thoughts and all of that, but like the thoughts is why. <laughs> the thoughts are why I'm depressed. So why would I spend any more time in them um, than at all necessary? Uh, so games for depression, I put this in quotation marks because this is what I play, uh, some of it. So I play Stardew Valley, which is a farming simulation. Uh, you inherit a farm from your grandfather. Uh, and, well, basically you need to clean up the community center of, the, of Pelican Town. Uh, there's a quest where you need to befriend a shop lady because the mayor left his underpants in her room mm. uh, <laughs> uh, and well basically you just help all the villages in the in Pelican town um, uh, it's, it's really relaxing but there's also mines uh, that you're going to to get like uh, ores to upgrade your tools um, which can be very stressful because there are obviously monsters in the mines uh, and if your sword is really bad, you, yeah, you don't want to go in there with a shitty sword. Uh, Super Mario 64, obviously for nostalgia, back to the simple days. Um, it's very frustrating to play now, <laughs> uh, but I used to be really good with it, so um, I still enjoy it. Uh, frustrating as in because the visuals don't need no, not the visuals as much, but the things that I used to be really good at, like the 
enemies that I used to yeah. take with these when I was like five. Um, I struggle with now, <laughs> which is kind of embarrassing, but it's, it is what it is, I guess. But it's also um, uh, one of our fellow students talked about this the other day. Um, it's a very open landscape, I realized, because when I was five, this was revolutionary. Like I could see all these elements from, from the game and it seemed very much alive. But now when I look at it compared to other games that we play now, it's very empty and it's very, in some room you feel very alone mm -hmm. <laughs> because there's not as many elements. Um, Dreamlight Valley, very similar to Stardew Valley, but with Disney. Um, also really good. Uh, I'm best friends with Scar at the moment, so we go fishing sometimes. <laughs> um, it's a really good game if you're feeling the... As a multiplayer or some of the... I might not, I guess, but the other ones are there sort of a multiplayer component as well? Like... Uh, yeah. Um, Dreamlight Valley just introduced a way to go visit uh, your friends' uh, villages. And Soda Valley has a co-op, so you can actually uh, run a farm with your friends, or you can uh, collect minions who are just wants to play for the for the sake of it, and they mm. can, they can like do all your farm work while you're doing other things, I guess. Um, so these are more for relaxations, uh, and then I go to uh, Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. Uh, because they have such a rich story, so it's easy to slip into it. Uh, but they also have uh, puzzles with the shrines that you have to get to kind of progress in the game. Um, some of them are impossible, others are quite easy. Um, uh, but it, it kind of has everything. You got the side quests, you got you can just go explore Hyrule, or you can go with the main quest and go straight to to Ganon. Um, and it's also really good because sometimes, some days, you just need to kill something, and it's illegal to kill <laughs> real people. Uh, so it's quite easy to slip into it and just go go nuts. And also, it's the Sims. People don't really know this, but The Sims has such a rich lore. And like it follow it, it progresses over the games. So um, Sims 4 Balagoth has a completely different story than Sims 1, uh, even though it's practically the same character. But sometimes in Sims 2, I think there was something about aliens. I haven't read up on it. There was something about aliens, and she disappeared for a while. And um, now she's back, but she's a bit odd. So, um, yeah, there are law and there's conspiracy theories and the lot. So they pick up on contemporary themes or uh, issues. Like, um, I mean, when you talk about coming go out, you're suggesting that the game's experience a continuous update, I guess, of some form. Yeah. Like, yeah, well, now that uh, Sims 4, there's yeah. quite a few updates every now and then. So, Mostly it's just bug fixes, but um, uh, the stories upgrade for each game. So they're in the progress of making Sims 5. So her story might progress even more for Sims 5 than it has for Sims 4. So uh, the Sims is what I'm going to be talking about in my report, big surprise. Um, so basically, it's um, it's a simulation. You can be whatever you want to be. You can own a house and have a family and hobbies and a social life at the same time, which seems a bit unrealistic at the moment, but um, we all have our dreams, I guess. Um, and what's special about Sims 4 is that it's very emotional, very emotional game compared to you before. Because before it was, what what can you be? Uh, Sims 4 is more, who can you be? So it relies very heavily on likes and dislikes and personality and moods. Um, 
So this is my main sim. His name is Matt. Uh, he has maxed out the dancing uh, skill because I forgot to pause the game one day and he just kept dancing. Uh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he was really having a day. Uh, but this is what I mean. Uh, you can give him traits. So he's a music lover, he's kind, creative, and a thinker that comes with the aspiration he has, which is actor. Uh, and because he's an actor, he's also a celebrity, so he has a very good reputation. Uh, and he has, his status is, um, I guess, equivalent to influencer, kind of. Um, kind of new in the game, uh, but working his way up. So relatively new is what the sim likes and doesn't like. So you can go in and choose um, the things he likes and doesn't like. Uh, oftentimes, uh, there is a speech bubble that comes up in the game. Uh, if he listens to a lot of hip hop, he can say, oh, I really like this, or I really don't like this. Uh, is it okay if I list it to my likes and don't likes? Uh, I've, I've checked his um, music genres, and apparently the only genre he likes at the moment is um, cottage core, which is kind of cute. <laughs> what, what, what's the genre? Cottage core. I don't really know what it is, but it's, it, it sounds nice. <laughs> uh, so, well, he has his quite old, uh, his own personality. He's the character that I made when I was into creative writing. So I've had him for a long time and he's nothing like what I imagined he would be when I put him in a game because he got his own life um, and he just kind of progressed on his own, um, making all these decisions. Even when I have him on um, always happy and I can kind of control him more. Uh, he's always doing stuff. Uh, one time I had him, he maxed out the mischief skill because um, he kept going on for I was to troll them. <laughs> so, um, very emotional, heavy. Uh, these are just scratching the surface of the moods that the Sims can have. Um, the worst one. I would say is the possessed. Um, hmm. It comes with the Strangerville package um, because there's like a plant that's given out all these uh, hormone things, I guess, and it possesses the Sims, and they look so creepy when they just walk in the street possessed. Um, but yeah, scared is also relatively new. It came with um, the paranormal package, I think. Um, but yeah, so you see all these uh, little squares next to the, um, the sim. So for each, each of them is a mood. So the possessed one has the plant hormone at the top because that's what she's feeling the most. But under that, she's also happy because she had a good meal, but she's sad because someone died apparently. Um, and dazed because she met, met um, an alien, I guess. Uh, but the, the mood left that's at the very top is, is what kind of controlling them. Uh, and if they get really, really angry, really embarrassed, really playful, they can actually die. So I've only had that happen once. She was in hysterics. And uh, I don't know why, but she just passed out, never to be seen again. So back to Matthew, um, he is feeling energetic because he's been dancing all day. Uh, but he's also inspired because he has nice art on the on the um, on the balls. That's the blue one, and you can kind of see the yellow going into green so they boost his mood 
Um, but if the energetic trait wasn't there, he would just be happy, I guess. And the gray one is that he's feeling okay about it, but he has clean floors because someone cleaned them. Um, but the, uh, <laughs> the, uh, the thing that I really wanted to talk about here is the, the uh, need bar, because someone said, I think it was a Reddit post actually, uh, that they had, um, when they were feeling really low, they would imagine this kind of need for themselves and kind of try to figure out where where they fell on the um, on the spectrum, what needs to be filled. So as these go down, his mood will shift, um, and his plumb bulb, the uh, diamond in the corner, will go yellow and then red uh, if his needs are met. So his mood will drastically change if, for example, he doesn't have any fun. Um, or he's really hungry, or he needs to sleep, or he needs a shower, whatever. So the, um, yeah, sometimes you just have a red plumb up over your head constantly. Um, one thing I like to do is to make life a little bit interesting. This can also affect the mood and the um, immersion into the, the game. So you can make it really realistic with slice of life, or you can go a bit extreme with extreme violence. Wicked whims and basement dull drugs are probably the most common ones. Um, but they are fun to play with. Extreme violence adds a little bit of zest to it, but slice of life uh, gives uh, a more realistic uh, touch to the game way they can have acne, they get um, periods, uh, they get sick for real. Um, so this sim has um, has a cold, so they're feeling, you can't really see it, but um, they're feeling dazed because they took medicine, uh, but they're at the, uh, the hospital currently, which you can see by the um, are the shot in the uh, in the corner, uh, but that mod just adds a lot more to the game. It gives a more realistic feel. You can you can still have the silliness of the Sims where they obsessed with llamas, but you can also have a more realistic way of dealing with life, dealing with um, just everyday troubles. Last time I played with uh, Slice of Life, um, Matt ended up needing glasses because apparently he couldn't read what was on the TV screen. And that was completely unprompted. It just takes its own life. Um, I didn't have to do anything for that. So, is it a serious game? Probably. Um, it simulates life events relationships and careers. Um, you get consequences for your actions, um, unless you turn the police option off. Uh, <laughs> uh, but it gives, it, it gives a good indication of how to navigate life, um, maintaining relationships, uh, because if, if you go too long without talking to someone, they'd be like, hey, why haven't you talked to me in forever? They'd be constantly on the phone nagging. Um, there's a level of creativity and customization, creating uh, environments and characters. Uh, you can also create stories. In Creative Sim, there is now um, a personality uh, option where you go through a range of questions and then the, the game generates um, a personality and if you should start with little money or a lot of money or what your aspiration is going to be, etc. It's um, It gives a bit more depth to the game uh, that way, in my opinion. Um, for someone with social anxiety and uh, who doesn't really dare speak up much, 
the social events can really give a safe space to um, explore social cues. Now, I don't think that chickens are going to uh, attack you if you tell a joke about dinosaurs. But um, so take the game with a grain of salt. Mm -hmm. But it's it's a good way to kind of see how how can I progress this conversation? This person gets angry. Should I leave? Should I say what's the cue? Uh, it, achievement to goal. All of them have their own um, aspirations that you need to reach goals for. Um, and when, when you finish an uh, aspiration, you can move on to the next one. Um, but they, it really makes them feel really good if they reach them. Um, the stories can be whatever you want them to be. So it, it's a break from real life. Um, and you can write your own, which I've done with uh, Matt over and over. Um, everyday tasks such as budget and time management is important. Obviously, in real life, you can't fast forward to the evening if you need to, but um, you can manage time somehow. Like you wouldn't set your sim to play a video game if it's only an hour until I have to be at work. Um, but yeah, uh, diverse backgrounds and diverse character can give empathy and understanding for different situations and different characters. Okay, that's all I had. That's a lot. Um, um, as, as part of the question, I was wondering, you start with focus on depression in the discussion, mm -hmm. and you shift to sims, right? It's one application case. Yeah. And um, when you're talking about it, I mean, of course, it could be you know one one fast way of dealing with depression, but that doesn't seem to be the most obvious one. In many instances, it feels like Sims is quite versatile. It looks like a Swiss army army knife of um, uh, sort of serious games opportunities, and as far as it's related to cognition or behavior in particular. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about um, autism as an application case, right? So because you listed the, what is it, 12, I don't know, uh, mm. emotional cues in a way. Mm. Uh, and, you know, if people struggle with this, detecting those in real life, I mean, what better environment, but, you know, a simulated environment to kind of mm. either train without any sort of harm or negative feedback, because that's what people mostly are afraid of if they misjudge, right, for instance, um, and someone's emotions in a way. Mm. So did you think about exploring that? I mean, the question is more a question to you, and that's looking forward towards your report writing, whether you want to explore this more um, since in serious games or constrain yourself to the context of depression management. Um, because those are two different problems, I guess, in a way. Like, yeah. like two different angles, in a way. Where if you look at depression, of course, you would slice out the aspects of sims, I guess, that could be related to help, you know, um, and deal with depression, particularly the aspect of escapism, if you like, like to get out of the real world for once in a way, mm -hmm. irrespective of what then the value would be of Sims. Or look at, you know, Sims more immediately, look at okay, which facets of skills or of uh, engagement can, you know, facilitate that may actually help people that perhaps not primarily, that are not primarily drawn to Sims because of depressive moods or whatever else, right? Because Perhaps he prescribed, let's say, by in the future, right, by behavioral therapists in a way, right? So for, for um, um, let's say, people on the spectrum or whatever else, right? Mm -hmm. So um, that might also be. So any any thought on this? Any, any angle? I have thought about it because, like you said, the Sims open up for different uh, revenues, um, and I think maybe I'm leaning towards talking about uh, the Sims and mental health or how it can help people in general and just talk about it as a serious game um but i did go into it talking about depression because for someone who struggles with depression quite a lot uh this seems has been um a very good tool to use just to get away from it for a bit so that's kind of my starting point but um i have thought about going into it more yeah uh, perhaps you can do that right so you start from the um 
uh, focus on the person, but then also elaborating because here's one opportunity. This game can be used as a nice metaphor, right, to explain depression a bit. Mm -hmm. Like I find the depression definition by the ICD or the WHO or whatever mm -hmm. quite useless. Yep. Like I, I don't know, like you know, it's 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 everything and nothing, short term, long term. Like you know, so it, uh, and then there's a lot of symptoms which uh, are overlapping with you know every second disease you can think of, right? So so it's not really substantive, but perhaps using the game as a metaphor, it might be helpful to get a better understanding of where and how it helps beyond the escapism, right? The structure is always, of course, one you know one way out in a way, but again, that's not helpful either because you know it's just about distraction then that needn't be sims. It could be something else that is just more akin to someone's personality. There needs to be something, I guess, that is perhaps particularly relevant in sims that helps you, you know, like I'm not I'm looking for an answer, I'm giving, mm. just thinking about it, to elicit like, um, uh, you know, um, the value of sims so that you your report would be worthwhile for someone, for instance, having depression and thinking, okay, is sims perhaps a pathway of for me to deal with? And if so, what, you know, and perhaps there is, well, actually, yeah, perfect. Or actually, no, my profession is quite different. Sims might not be able to help you. Mm -hmm. No, so I think that's that's the, the the opportunity that I see there, right? So, um, and then perhaps look at other works um, that use sim from different perspectives, like then you know as a second order of concern and a related working way to see if other uh, if sims has been used in other ways for you know therapeutic reasons. I, I don't whatever. I don't know. I mean, that's that's. I made our research in the end, but um, this way, kind of, you can merge those two perspectives to, to, to some extent, explaining how depression works in wire sims, for instance. It's a very different paper, I guess. And the other one is to, you know, I have still the academic side on it anyway by seeing, um, you know, what are related angles on the use of sims for different, as a sims game for X, for whatever, mm -hmm. you know, Twitter, but for, for something else. I mean, like, that's the thoughts that come basically. Um, and one question I, or reflection I had as well is when you talk about short term versus long term, um, also reasonably useless characterization. Um, are there some game question? That's the extra question. Are there some games that might be better suited to short term, like now treat more of them, um, Addressing short uh, short term episodes of depression and games that are better served for long term exercise. because there's this, this addiction problem with this. Like if you have a short term distraction that keeps you or removes you from your own life, right? Mm -hmm. Afterwards, you may have this negative slump effect, right? So that slightly reads or shit, I just wasted time basically, and now a problem. If not anything else got worse, but in any case, it didn't get solved, right? Um, or if it's like it's sort of kind of I guess more the, the, the long term kind of aspect of it. But if it's a short term thing, you just need to bridge this, you know, you, oh shit, it's coming. Um, you know, you're slipping into the present mood that you have some tool, some game to mitigate this until this phase is over. Mm. So that you can slip back into normal life without much sort of, if that makes any sort of sense what I'm saying, I don't know. Yeah. Um, so that you can take it any way you like. But I mean, this long term, short term thing, I don't know if it's there. Do you see that particular games are better for one or the other? I think. Um... Well, for either of them, Sparks would be really good because you can only play so long. You, ah, you yeah. get um, like an e-learning bit and then you can apply what you've learned into the game. But you can only play, I think it's two levels. Um, so that would be good for just to search it for a moment, but don't overdo it. Um, with the Sims and Stardew Valley, um, you can just play for hours. You either pick the game up for four months Oh, you don't pick it up at all. It's it's um, it's very addictive. Um, but it again, it depends on the person. Uh, is do they have a history of like addictive things? Then maybe I would stick to something like Sparks or something. What I find is when I play games like Candy Crush and there's a, an ad, I'm more likely to just close the app and do something else because I can't be bothered with the ads. Um, okay, yeah. ads as a kind of killer. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. Um, but yeah, it, it depends on on the patience of the person, I guess. So it's it's a it's a very open question you had. Yeah, yeah, of course. 
I didn't mean to take the space. Mm -hmm. um, sorry. That's all right. Feel free to ask questions. I was just wondering. First, my uh, reflections, what you think. The thoughts. I no? play the Sims as well, so I know the whole uh, going into another world. That's mm -hmm. very nice. So, uh, so I agree with that. Um, yeah. But you also need to, you need to stick to it, right? So Sims, right? So it's like uh, it seems like you're buying into it to some extent, and then you're shaping your character, you are not avatar, but like you know, what's that called? What are they called? Then, Sim. That's all oh, right. For sure. <laughs> uh, you're creating your Sim, and then you're basically maintaining them perpetually, right? Mm -hmm. So do you feel guilty if you don't take the avatar? <laughs> not really. <laughs> not really. <laughs> okay. Okay, so yeah, still, uh, I was just wondering, you know, whether the dissociation happens or if I should be concerned. Um, <laughs> so, right. um, okay. But so it's you, you agree that you think it's one of those games that you either kind of buy mode of either, either you like it or you kind of don't have a. Uh, it doesn't work for you. Does it work for you? Sims as well? Okay. Okay, that's just a pattern here. Yeah. You probably should open Sims Club I don't know if that's a thing. Well, it's free on um, on uh, EA now. The, the the base game is free, so. I see. Yeah. Can you interact with other people that you know? I mean, I know it's multiplayer, but could you, for instance, interact with people that you actually know via the game as well, or not? Uh, no, you can interact with them via EA, but not via the game. Um, I see. Yeah. So that's separate. Yeah, because you you can only talk to them via the platform. I see. Yeah. Um, so you could never meet in virtual life. No. But apparently for Sims 5, that's going to be an option to um, do multiplayer, so... I think this could open up a lot of uh, dynamics, uh, opportunities. That, yeah. Um, if, if people want to not relate to their character, but, you know, via characters in a way. Also, yeah. again, a great opportunity for theoretical characters. Um, you check out, um, there was a few years back, um, something on Minecraft for that purpose as well. Um, and, and, and it was um, then, in fact, also for, for behavioral training that uh, children were mixed up in Minecraft mm -hmm. and collaborate in, in a space, in a way, whatever, right? So it was this um, um, kind of, what was the explorer mode? Um, this is um, where you could just, you know, there's no challenge element there, it's just construct, you know, where you could just explore, I guess, um, also not survival mode. Um, but uh, like you know, Rebecca gave a good good rundown on, on Friday on this. Um, but um, they used it as well, and, and it came out quite favorably for children that would also again struggle with some behavioral challenges, like that would, for instance, uh, you know, um, be very aggressive in classroom environments, but mostly because they couldn't exercise that tra those traits in this environment. They had to resort to other means, mm. uh, usually by communication. So it might be that. I don't know, there may be even something in, I don't know, Minecraft is one one, one of the possible for facilitator. I, I cannot speak to depression. That may also be something to research on. Though. Perhaps Minecraft is also an escaping uh, a, a way of, of, of the, whatever it would be, right? So one, one of the many modes that they offer, um, because it has, it's also one of those games that has so many facets um, to it in a way. But um, in any case, it was used for children for training their ability to interact in a way by uh, the metaphor of construction. Mm. Yeah, so I think you have an interesting um, challenge ahead of you. Yep. Um, I think a completely feasible one, um, but you're making your life a bit hard because um, you want to, um, because you frame the whole topic, right? So sometimes it's easier to let the literature frame the work for you in a way, right? The systematic literature review sometimes solves a lot of um, struggle work, uh, you know, in, 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 by trading it for work. Right? Um, but here, your your task will be to kind of really think about okay, how do you want to frame uh, your deliver proposal? I think um, I think it's a very promising direction. Um, but what I mean, do you have anything else in mind or questions regarding this, or want some inspiration? some other reflections that you can offer? 
Um, not at the moment. Not at the moment. No. Uh, too many competing deadlines. <laughs> Actually, no, because um, I'm a bit all over the place because I had to put an all nighter to write um, the report for yesterday. I see. And then I almost had to do it again today. So um, I can't really <laughs> think of anything. Can't think straight. Yeah. Mm, okay. Yeah. So. So, well, it's just in fact for now. <laughs> Sorry for not getting more participants. Yeah, I think that's um, generally one of the challenges that we uh, sometimes face. I need to think about making this a bit more mandatory. But um, overall, um, thank you for joining. Um, do you 